Some of you may have seen this. This is a commercially available compact induction heater that's driven by a Mazzilli driver or oscillator and runs off DC voltage. These can be run off of batteries. Now what happens if you take that copper coil out and replace it with an iron or stainless steel coil? Would that give us a way of making an instant hot water heater? Let's find out. And uh, we're gonna actually run this off a 48 volt battery. It's very quiet because you don't really hear a lot, but you can see it darkening and heating up. So as you can see, ferromagnetic material gets very hot with high frequency oscillating magnetic fields. Now I have a frequency meter, which I've used in a previous video, and I'm gonna show you what frequency we're getting when we operate this thing. So I'm gonna put that coil near to the induction heater coil, and it should be enough to pick up the frequency. So here it goes. So it operates at about 115 kilohertz is what that's operating at. So what if we remove this copper coil, which I've just done, and instead of using the copper coil to heat a piece of steel, such as this uh, piece of iron, what if I replace the coil with iron and let the coil heat itself up? And so that if we were to pass hot water through the coil, we would have a source of instant hot water while the coil was operating. So that's what this video is about, to see if it's possible to remove the copper coil and replace it with a steel coil. This is actually stainless steel, but it still gets hot. Um, it still heats up in an induction heater. The coil itself should be the workpiece. So it's basically gonna be the workpiece and the induction coil at the same time. So instead of you know, heating up metal like that, we heat up the coil and then use the coil to heat up water that's passed through this. And I've made this one, this is quarter inch uh, stainless steel. And I've made it in such a way that you can drain off the hot water right there and use a battery to obtain the heated water. And uh, there are different types of steel. Um, you know, this is the grade that I happen to get. Um, it's not magnetic and I've tried heating it and, ra and rapidly quenching it to see if I could get it to be magnetic. And I could never really induce any significant magnetism in it by heating it and cooling it to try and change its structure. So we're gonna connect this coil or a similar one into the induction heater and test it. So let's begin. So I've now replaced the copper coil with the stainless steel coil here. Now with the different size coils, with this one, this one goes pretty close to 150 or 160 kilohertz. This one's a bit less. And um, we're gonna demonstrate, and I've never tried this before, so I don't know if this is actually gonna work. Using this Mazzilli driver to run an instant uh, hot water heater. And I have a cup to collect the hot water. And I have a little pump right here that I'm gonna pump the uh, water out of this bottle through the coil and into the cup. Now, of course, the amount of heating that you get is gonna depend on the rate of the water traveling through the, through the coil. The slower the water travels through the coil, the more heating you're gonna get. And I believe this pump is a little bit rapid, so it may pump it a bit too fast and the water may not heat that much, but since I've never tried this, I have no idea if that's gonna work. And I'm gonna get a thermal meter to measure the temperature of the water. And then I'm gonna try a different setting where the water travels at a slower rate by adjusting the voltage that I apply to the, to the pump. So first let's get the thermal meter going so we can look at the temperature of the water in the cup right after we collect it. So the thermal meter is now on, here it goes. 
Heat is now activated. I can feel the, the heat of the water in the cup. Okay, let's stop. It's giving me a temperature of 40 degrees, 41 degrees. So that's actually like hot water out of your tap. Okay, what I'm using now is a small buck controller to reduce the, the 12 volt from this uh, wall adapter to 6 volt. So it will turn the pump uh, slower and so our water should come out hotter. As I said earlier, water temperature depends on how fast the water is flowing through that uh, stainless steel coil. And it obviously went through pretty quick the first time around. So now we're gonna do the same experiment again with a slower flow rate. It already feels a lot harder. Okay, now let's measure the temperature with this thermal meter. Hey, the temperature's at least 60 or more degrees um, with the pump pumping the water through the coil slower. So, we've established that the stainless steel coils can be used to heat up water and it does do it fairly effectively. But there are some issues that I've discovered. And one of the issues is there's very, very high current draw. So I'm gonna test it further by using a switch mode power supply. The problem with that much current draw when you're dealing with MOSFETs that are rated <clears throat> for a maximum of 50 amps is MOSFET failure. And I noticed that these heat sinks, which are not fan cooled, these were actually getting, getting pretty hot. So, we're going to test it with this adjustable switch mode power supply and measure the uh, voltage and see what happens. Okay, I have the switch mode power supply turned on around 43 volts or so. And um, I've got a current meter connected to the switch mode power supply and I haven't got any water going through it. So what we're going to do is I'm showing you the voltage and I'm going to connect this to the switch mode power supply. And let's see what happens to that voltage. See if it holds the voltage or drops it. So it's dropped it to about 19.5 volts. And the current is it's drawing around 14 amps with a voltage drop. So that's definitely not a good thing. The MOSFETs actually don't feel that hot, surprisingly. They're not even warm, so... Um, I think as long as the gate voltage is above 12 volts, you know, so 19 volts was the drop. As long as those gate voltages hold above 12 volts, I think it's, they should switch cleanly with ZVS switching. If the gate voltage drops below 12 volts, then there's going to be a lot of heating and failure of the MOSFETs. I'm going to take out this stainless steel non-magnetic coil. It's still actually hot from the last experiment. And I'm going to replace it with this soft iron coil. So let's go ahead and try this out. Here's our voltage. I'm going to connect it up and see what happens to the voltage. Here it goes. Get a big voltage drop and we got a current spike. I'm just going to touch the back of my hand to that coil. There's virtually no heating. It's just a little tiny bit warm. But if it was stainless steel, that would have been very hot with just a few seconds of application. So iron is not going to work. And it'll probably lead to MOSFET failure because the applied voltage on the gates is less than 12 volts. Now let's go back and try the original deal, the copper that was designed for use with this induction heater and see what kind of amperage that draws. And uh, Let's see what this does with current and voltage. So I'm gonna connect it up. And we're at 42 volts, no voltage drop. 
Our current is 5.9 amps with no voltage drop. It's working in a true ZVS fashion. And the copper coil has some heat in it. Not quite as much as that stainless steel. So in summary, uh, we accidentally found that by using a stainless steel coil, you can get a lot of heating rapidly, enough to uh, have a, a decent flow of water through the uh, coil and get yourself a decent amount of hot water. And, uh, but with the expense of drawing high current and with some voltage drop. With the iron coil, this was a total failure because it caused a very large voltage drop below the gate voltage of the MOSFET and with little or no heating of the iron itself. And with copper, there was some heating of the copper with little or no voltage drop and with a, a mild amount of current draw. So each one of these materials has its own unique properties. And I think by using stainless steel and the correct setup, this would provide a way of making an instant hot water heater. So I'm glad you had a chance to see this video. And I think with optimization of your capacitance, the amount of voltage applied, and um, the number of turns on your coil, you can optimize the, he the heat production for a uh, instant water heater. And I think this kind of setup would even work with a solar array where you could have solar generated uh, hot water. Thanks for watching folks and don't forget to keep on experimenting.